Hello, uh, my name is Wheaton Schroeder. I am a sixth year PhD student in chemical engineering uh, studying under Dr. Rajiv Saha uh, at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. And I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch my video presentation for my poster for the Central US Synthetic Biology Workshop. And what I'd like to talk to you about today is a tool that I've been developing for the last year and a half called Eugene SID. Uh, it's a tool that uses optimization in order to try to design genetic circuits to accomplish a specific task. Um, so a little bit of background, genetic circuits are uh, usually collections of transcripts, promoters, enzymes, RNA, DNA, whatever else uh, that we're going to collectively call bioparts here, um, which are put together generally in a rational and intuitive manner in order to try to accomplish a specific task. Um, <clears throat> what this tool is trying to do is it's trying to come at the design of genetic circuits from a different angle, not through an intuitive angle, but through a numerical angle. So how Eugene SID works in broad terms is we have basically five different libraries uh, of bioparts to choose from in order to accomplish a specific design task. Uh, so these bioparts include promoters, terminators, transcripts, enzymes, and ligands. Here we define ligands as uh, the inputs to which we hope the system will respond to in the desired manner. Uh, and each of these different libraries has different sets of characteristics, uh, usually they're qualitative characteristics, that we're going to characterize using uh, some type of number, whether that be a binary number, a trinary number, or an integer. Uh, so for instance, for our promoter library, we quantify things like how strong the promoter is, uh, what's its normal state, is it normally on or off? What is the regulation on that promoter uh, and how leaky is that promoter? So how uh, inefficient it, it is at being turned off. <clears throat> um, and so what Eugene SID does is it uses an optimization algorithm in order to try to put these bio parts together in such a manner that it will accomplish a task that you specify it to do. Um, so its output will look something like this. So it will be sets of promoter, transcript, terminator, uh, for lack of a better word, pairs, which <clears throat> when put together in a genetic circuit will accomplish the desired task. It will also talk about um, what the states of each of these bioparts are in the particular conditions. So for instance, I just showed for hypothetical conditions, and in these conditions, uh, there's discussion uh, from the results of Eugene Sid as to uh, the state of the promoters, the state of the transcripts, and the state of the enzymes. And this will give a bunch of information which you might need in order to uh, decide whether or not to accept a particular design. Now, another advantage of using optimization mathematics is that we're also able to come up with alternative solutions. Uh, so this is just proposed designs, proposed circuit design number one, but we can also have proposed circuit design number two through, uh, for instance, number n. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the, uh, the goal, the overall project idea of Eugene SID. The first application of Eugene SID that we tried was to mazes nitrogen assimilation pathway. So we used all the native uh, promoters, transcripts, genes, terminators of that pathway. We hard-coded um, the Eugene SID solution using that biopart library. And then we tried to see if Eugene SID would accurately replicate the circuit behavior. So we used uh, transcriptomic data that we got from a collaborator in the Center for Root and Rhizobiome Innovation. And what we were able to show uh, is that the Eugene SID predicted transcript levels in the blue bars on this um, <clears throat> bar graph in panel three. 
uh, matched up fairly well to the provided transcriptomic data, which is these orange bars in, uh, <clears throat> in panel three. Uh, where it did not match well, our hypothesis is that it's likely due to a lack of system regulatory knowledge because despite the importance of May's to certain um, Midwestern states, it's not as well studied as we had hoped it would be. Now, this first part of the project was actually accomplished with the help of some high school student researchers who were here for the summer. Uh, but after that part of the project, I actually went to a conference on uh, plant synthetic biology. And I learned at that conference that terminators are a really important part of uh, gene regulation in plant systems. So this last summer, with the aid of some more high school researchers, as well as an undergraduate researcher who came to us through the Nebraska Summer Research Program, we sophisticated the Eugene SID algorithm from only looking at promoters and uh, transcripts to also including terminators. Uh, and we also cast another high school researcher to add a graphical user interface for this tool because what we were ha what the problem we were running into is that we had 23 plus input files um, and they were all programmed in a mathematical programming language. Uh, so we wanted to have something that would be more user friendly that synthetic biologists would be able to, to work on. Uh, so what's shown in this panel four here is how we had a predicted um, fluorescent reporter protein based on the available nitrogen sources from the first version of Eugene SID um, and how we were able to sophisticate that to the second version of Eugene SID uh, by adding terminators and how we were also able to add a graphical user interface. So in addition to this, we also looked at modeling a negative autoregulation circuit in, that was uh, done in vivo in uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae uh, in order to, to show that we could uh, also model dose-dependent genetic circuit behavior. Um, so these uh, cool colors, the green, the purple, and the blue, uh, all represent in vivo behavior, and this uh, orange line represents our predicted Eugene SID behavior. Uh, so we were able to accurately replicate <clears throat> in vivo behavior uh, of a dose dependent genetic circuit up to a certain point. And that certain point was uh, up to about here where we started getting uh, signal saturation. So at present, we're not really able to model signal saturation with Eugene SID, um, but at moderate and low signal levels, we believe that our tool is accurate and will be predictive. So some of our ongoing and future work uh, is that you might have noticed that I haven't mentioned any time dependence in our circuit behavior yet, and that's because we haven't modeled it, modeled it yet. Uh, so that's going to be our big project goal uh, going forward for the next year is to try to model time dependent circuit behavior. Uh, we would also hope to model signal saturation. Uh, if we can do that, uh, depending on what kind of data is available there uh, as to how things are regulated based on dosage. Uh, and finally, we want to be able to design a genetic circuit uh, which improves the <coughs> uh, relationship or some of the metabolic interactions between ZMAs and its associated rhizobiome in order to try to increase uh, plant health and uh, hopefully increase crop yield. And that's what we're actually funded to do in the long run for this project, because uh, this project is funded by the Center for Root and Rhizobiome Innovations, uh, which is studying uh, maize roots and how those interact with the associated rhizobiome. Uh, we're hoping to confirm our genetic circuit in silico by importing it into a stoichiometric model of metabolism and using various uh, methods which have been developed for stoichiometric models in order to try to incorporate incorporate regulatory schemes uh, to test out our designs uh, in silico before we move to an in vivo application. So in summary, uh, I, what I'm doing is developing a 
an optimization-based tool in order to design genetic circuits in a computational manner, which can hopefully identify some non-intuitive solutions to certain synthetic biology problems, which we haven't been able to solve as of yet through intuitive methods. And uh, we, we still need a, a few months of uh, improvements for the tool, especially to build in this time-dependent circuit behavior. Uh, and eventually we're hoping to apply this in vivo to maize in order to try to increase crop yield. Finally, I would like to thank the Center for Root and Rhizobiome Innovation, which funds this work, uh, as well as the Na National Science Foundation, which funds the center. Uh, and as a sixth year PhD student, I'd like to make a shameless plug here in saying that I will be graduating in the upcoming semester. And if any professor who is watching this video uh, is interested in hiring uh, a postdoctoral researcher who has uh, expertise in computational methods or in computational tool building, I would love to talk to you about that opportunity. Uh, I also do have some wet lab experience uh, back in my undergraduate days. And if uh, if you'd be willing to let me uh, expand my portfolio a bit into computate into wet lab work, I'd also be willing to talk about that possibility as well. So um, you can contact me through my Discord uh, channels, uh, particularly hashtag Schroeder underscore Wheaton, uh, which is going to be my text channel, or uh, at Schroeder underscore Wheaton, which is going to be my... <coughs> Um, video channel and uh, hopefully I will uh, talk to any of you shortly about uh, the possibility of finding a position. Thank you.